We have Sophie Ndaba in studio with us and she's an incredible, celebrated uh, actress. She's been behind the scenes, still is behind the scenes, but she's had such a journey that involves entrepreneurship and right now health, wellness and fitness. Sophie Ndaba, thank you so much for joining us today. Really exciting to have you here. How are you? I'm fabulous. Thank you so much for having me here. I was in the background playing music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Friday. Getting into the vibe. <laughs> Getting you know? into the vibe, but yeah. Uh, I'm fabulous. I mean, it's Friday. I wish yes. it was a holiday. Yesterday was a holiday, right? So it yeah. Was. So I just wish it was. I mean, I think it's still a long weekend. It yeah. is. Some yeah. people took uh, time off today, mm. but for those who work in the places that we do, we don't know what a holiday is, right? Ever. <laughs> Ever. So I've never known a holiday. We, we, we we don't work like that. I'm glad you're here. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so you've much. had uh, you're, you've had quite a life, decades yeah. on on our screens. The likes of Benjamin was saying, you know what? I've never watched Generations since Sophie Ndaba left. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you were part of an era where household names were really household names. But you have, you know, flowered and bloomed into so many different parts of your lives on screen, behind the scenes, entrepreneurship. But we, let's let's find out the beginning, right? Uh, Sophie Ndaba, as a child, how were you? How did you grow up? And, uh, you know, a lot of people who become part of our screens every day have quite a, 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 an upbringing where they already see the stardom from there. Is, is that true for you? I, I, I grew up in the dusty streets of Soweto. Yeah. And I then, even still before I was even 10 years old, I was already in Zimbabwe, Harare. Uh, living in an orphanage mm. um, and and I think that's what really grounded me to be you know the person that I am today um, and I always believe that there's always a reason why things happen in one's life and I think yeah. you know my foundation was the key that created the structure of strength and um, the, those beginnings of, of, of the confidence um, the shyness initially and obviously because you're in a foreign land, foreign space, foreign mm -hmm. everything and then obviously gaining the confidence because of the people around you and the people encouraging you and prayer of course has always been the center of my life from childhood so mm -hmm. I think I always had that as my backup plan to say how do I pass this stage how do i become the success or the confidence that i need where do i draw it from so yeah south africans and uh, people around africa etc mm -hmm. um who were confused about my condition who were whispering about my condition and didn't really know you know i always say that you don't know something until you're in it i suppose so i mm -hmm. kind of was angry at the beginning, mm -hmm. irritated at the beginning, but sure. eventually I kind of understood that how about the next? They mm -hmm. don't know anything, they confuse themselves. You know, uh, if they had to test some of them who are on the more on the bigger side, they'd really find out that they're pre diabetic, which is something I was also on more on the bigger side, and I didn't mm -hmm. know that I was pre diabetic for many, many years, mm -hmm. you know, until I actually. You know, got dizzy in the mall and realized that these are the signs my mom has. These are the signs my dad has because mm -hmm. we were both living with diabetes for many, many years. And my mom was on insulin, my dad was on pills, my dad had a heart condition. So, you know, it was already, you know, an example to say the red flag earring, check yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, check yourself. Hey, and most I of ignored, us are afraid of checking. Absolutely. Things. And I yeah. ignored myself. Yeah. I ignored the signs. I ignored the red flags. I, I ignored anything and everything. And I just carried on. And also, I was really a very busy life i was a wedding planner yeah, you yeah. know planning multi-million rand weddings yeah. across the globe here i'm a superstar actress mm. and i want to make it and here i'm a mother as well and i want to live as a person sure. so you know you, you know where that started really that that, that 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 journey of diabetes which was not something i'm proud of uh, was through my lifestyle Mm -hmm. Bottom line, mm -hmm. it's lifestyle. Yeah. Sure. Lifestyle of eating, lifestyle of chilling, lifestyle of where you go, when you wake up, what do you do? What's the first thing you do? Do you, do you pray? Do you drink water? Or mm -hmm. do you just get up and say, oh, hey, I'll think fry my gun. Yeah. 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 Facebook let, uh, let me Facebook, <laughs> let me be on, on social media. What mm -hmm. is it that you do? What are your habits? Sure. And I think I needed to change my habits and I start teaching people how to change their habits. And that it's not that difficult. It's not yeah. that technical. It's mm -hmm. not that big of a drama, you know? Mm -hmm. You just need to adjust.
just one or two things and you actually realize it's going to save you mm. and it's going to change your life and you're going to live longer you know it takes a lot of learning and unlearning to get to a place where you use challenges in your life Absolutely. to educate other people Absolutely. and for most people when they go through challenges especially health challenges they deal with themselves and they don't really care about what then you know what mm. comes next mm. but once you got your you know your mental health in check mm. again and you were able to say okay I'm still myself. I'm still Sophie Ndaba. No, I don't look like myself. No, you yes. don't look like your former self. Yes. But uh, I can still take this forward. The idea, I mean, you've been an entrepreneur for a long time. So, of course, ideas have always been your thing. So then the idea of saying, okay, I can take this and bring the brand new day. And the brand new day is myself living with diabetes but also uh, educating others and also helping their health take us into that uh, bringing together your health and your entrepreneurship together in your, your new light you know people around africa etc mm -hmm. um who are confused about my condition who are whispering about my condition and didn't really know you know i always say that you don't know something until you're in it i suppose so i mm -hmm. kind of was angry at the beginning, mm -hmm. irritated at the beginning, but sure. eventually I kind of understood that how about seven eggs? They mm -hmm. don't know anything, they confuse themselves. You know, uh, if they had to test some of them who are on the more on the bigger side, they'd really find out that they're pre diabetic, which is something I was also on more on the bigger side, and I didn't mm -hmm. know that I was pre diabetic for many, many years, mm -hmm. you know, until I actually you know, got dizzy in the mall and realized that these are the signs my mom has. These are the signs my dad has because mm -hmm. we were both living with diabetes for many, many years. And my mom was on insulin, my dad was on pills, my dad had a heart condition. So, you know, it was already, you know, an example to say the red flag airing, check yourself, mm -hmm. you know, check yourself. And, and I ignored, afraid of checking absolutely. Things, and I ignored yeah. myself. Yeah. I ignored the signs. I ignored the red flags. I, I ignored anything and everything. And I just carried on. And also I was really a very busy life. I was a wedding planner, yeah, you yeah. know, planning multi million rand weddings yeah. across the globe. Here I'm a superstar actress and mm. I want to make it and here I'm a mother as well and I want to live as a person. Sure. So, you know, you, you know, where that started really that that, that 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 journey of diabetes, which was not something I am proud of, uh, was through my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Bottom line, mm -hmm. it's lifestyle. Yeah. Sure. Lifestyle of eating, lifestyle of chilling, lifestyle of where you go, when you wake up, what do you do? What's the first thing you do? Do you do you pray, do you drink water or do mm -hmm. you just get up and say, Oh, a out in fry my gun. Yeah, let me Facebook, let me be on, on social media. What mm -hmm. is it that you do? What are your habits? Sure. And I think I needed to change my habits and I start teaching people how to change their habits and that it's not that difficult. It's not yeah. that technical. It's mm -hmm. not that big of a drama, you know? Mm -hmm. You just need to adjust one or two things and you actually realize the good thing. It's going to save you mm -hmm. and it's going to change your life and you're going to live longer. And then ran sure. little empire to, to zero. Mm -hmm. You know, not because somebody said stop. It just stopped because there were a lot of things affecting me in my life at the time. Sure. And 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 all I did was just cringe in a little corner and nobody knew that I was even cringing because all they knew is that Sophie's got it together, man. Mm -hmm. She makes things happen, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why even as friends, I mean I was talking to the MEC of Health of Houting the other day with her team that's and cool. they were saying that it's you know, depression is all about, you know, the mind and it's also the people around you, when they see that you're depressed, what do they do to support you? Yeah. Your support structure is mm -hmm. very, very key. And yeah. especially your immediate support structure. Who are those? The people that you live with. Your close friends that you chat to from time to time. Sometimes we say, but what mm -hmm. is the role of a friendship? Sure. What is the sure. role of a family member? What is the role of togetherness, right? So I needed that support. Yes, I got it there and there, but I think people are also a little bit lost themselves mm -hmm. because I was also not allowing them in. Mm -hmm. But what do you do when somebody doesn't allow you in? Do you also still ignore them or do mm -hmm. you still push your way through and say, I'm going to help you? And it did take a few people to actually get me saved yeah. to my sanity first mm -hmm. before to the fixing. Yeah. Yeah. I get, yeah. So, so so wellness is about mental wellness, it's about lifestyle that we talk yeah. about. Everything works together for the good of your survival. You know, you know one Ruin. step in the right direction. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. you've taken a lot of ideas and you know they've come to pass. So you can do the same and you've already imagined it uh, you know as something that is here. Yeah. Uh, and, and turn it into a business. Yes. Yeah. And turn it into a business. Yeah. Sure.
because yeah. now that I'm no longer making my millions, I must still survive. Now that I'm no longer mm. really acting, because also if you are going to be on the screen, you need the energy, you need people to believe that you're okay. Mm -hmm. You know, productions are very hard work, long hours, so you need to be a very healthy and strong person. You might not be 100% healthy, but at least you must be a strong or show that you can, you know, you can withstand the long hours, the standing, the repeats. Calm action, mm -hmm. let's start again. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, let me let me bank that on mm -hmm. the side and let me do my wellness uh, 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 tonic. So one day a friend of mine is a doctor. She's actually a doctor of, of, of diet dietetics. Mm -hmm. And she said, I own a farm. Here's a vegetable. I want you to drink it. I want you to eat it. And then one day at 3 a.m. I woke up and God said, turn it into that's a tonic. It. Uh, that's and I woke up at 3 a.m put on a blender started, <laughs> I mean she said cook it like a stir fry yeah. sure. and I made it into a tonic and I tested it ran to the loo so many times because I overdid <laughs> the mixture and then came back and called and said what is this thing that you've given me she said it's going to clean your gut it's going to clean you and it's going to clean your blood and it's going to it's just going to heal you yeah. and Bona, I became the guinea pig for that product that I made into a tonic and you know um, probably a year later I've got I wouldn't say patients, but I've got clients who are on the test program and they're drinking this tonic. And this mm -hmm. tonic, let me tell you, it heals over 15 things. Not heals, but manages. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing that really heals, right? Yeah. But it manages your illness, whether it may be gout, whether it may be uh, your blood needs cleansing, your kidney, your mm -hmm. liver, diabetes. It's got insulin properties in it, so it manages your insulin levels, which means your pills, your doctor can end up bringing down your medication mm. in consultation and management. So it's it's like a miracle tonic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, when we started, we should do a podcast with you one day. But look, let's chat a little bit about you and mm. where you are right now. I think you've broken so many stereotypes. You're one of the first people, plus size, fashionable. You, you broke that TV plus size image of that lady. You know, you always, you, yeah, yeah, you were just this fabulous plus yeah. size person. So now you're breaking stereotypes in the health space. And you look fabulous. Thank You've you. lost a lot of weight. Yes, it's you are diabetic, but you're breaking that stereotype. In terms of when you're reflecting on where you are right now, are you happy? Oh, to yourself. Sure. We're too hard on ourselves. We want to please people. We're in a hurry to heal. We're in a hurry to fix. We're in a hurry to re get restoration. And it's a process. Okay. You know, it's like a small child. You become a small child again. You have to learn how to crawl, learn how to walk, learn how to touch, learn how to say this is right, this is wrong. And that's exactly where you need to allow yourself to go. Go to the lowest point and start building upwards because once you start building upwards, going down is where you are. Yeah. But going upwards is where you're going. So yeah. how amazing is that? So it's one step at a time. So my advice is allow the process. Allow. It took me two years mm. to even regain my weight. Mm. Two to three years to regain my weight. Step by step, looking at the scale, thinking I only gained 100 grams. Oh my mm. gosh. Mm. While other people are struggling to lose, yeah. I was struggling to gain. Mm. You know? Yeah. So, 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 sure. you know, just one step at a time mm -hmm. have faith in yourself shut down the noise mm -hmm. shut down the friends who say negative things the neighbors who look at you and stare at you when they stare darling smile mm -hmm. because then they will have no comeback story for you